na ode masi obo danso ode me na ya titin bo se me re se aseda na di ejo ma se ma no ejo foforo bi aye yi yo a ete ya se me ma ma nsaya tenika na wa janga beto ano na wa yo gwanko bia se ranka oni pa ode ne hoto e wura de so na o chenani mede ya me boni di da ha me wara de le de Mamane so atire aman sanina efite oye owora e perise oye owora na tere ne nani obite se onu oye tete na me Just put your hands together put your hands together for honorable and gravia ifadate thank you very much and god bless you your excellency mr president i'm singing this song as i always do just to praise the name of almighty god ma kenga wora de anim wa bere na su ase na wa ti men pai bo na ode masi obo danso ode me na ya titin bo se me re se aseda na di ejo ma se ma no ejo foforo bi aye yi yo a ete ya se me ma ma nsaya tenika na wa janga beto ano na wa yo gwanko bia se ranka oni pa ode ne hoto e wura de so na o chenani mede ya me boni di da ha me wara de le de me mane so atire aman sanina efite oye owora e perise oye owora na tere ne nani obi te se onu oye tete na me just put your hands together put your hands together so that's the MPP super delegate T-shirt that we are all wearing tonight, uh, indicating our readiness for a full coverage of the super delegate event here at Metro TV on Good Evening Ghana, on Good Morning Ghana, on all our social media platforms. Saturday is a big day. We're all going to be in this T-shirt. And that's our production crew ready for the show. And now in the studio, you see that uh, I have my T-shirt ready. Everyone in the studio uh, is in the same T-shirt for the... Uh, uh, as we did with Asin North, uh, when we, we designed a T-shirt for Asin North, we have designed another one. This is a Good Evening Ghana special edition. Good evening to you all. Welcome to the show. And tonight we're going to take you back into the MPP history. We have two important interviews coming up. One uh, is, is going to represent the Alan Chematin camp. And he's already in the studio uh, to tell us about, about why he thinks that Alan Chematin should be the candidate to be elected. And our brother Gideon Buako is also here and he'll be explaining to us the matters relating to why Dr. Balmier's camp should be uh, also uh, elected. We have picked up this story on social media relating to the interview we conducted on Tuesday about Samir Oku is, is being accused of saying that MPP doesn't need Ashanti votes, they only need Northern votes. I'm not sure why anybody would think Samir Oku said that, but we'll get back to the details that Samir Oku in your shot. He gave us such a, a stupendous interview on Tuesday, very widely appreciated by many, 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 many people. Uh, even some NDC people called me and said that that interview with Samir Oku was very, very good and that uh, he spoke so well and he, he was very measured 
and the things he said and uh, and everyone liked the interview however this story comes up these days that happens all the time they said samia who said mpp doesn't need ashanti votes they only need northern votes he didn't say that he couldn't have said that no mpp person can say that but we'll show you the clip samia who was making a comparison between barack obama's relationship with the democratic party and how the Democratic Party had to choose Barack Obama at that time to settle a matter and to secure the black votes that, that, uh, that, that they've always had a certain romantic relationship with. He believes that it was the securing of the black votes in 2008 by presenting Barack Obama, the first ever black candidate on the American presidential ballot in history um, for, for a major political party like the Democratic Party. Uh, Barack Obama was the first. And, um, and he says that as a result of that, the Democratic were able to, the Democratic Party, the DNC, was able to secure the, um, the black votes. And in 2020, that augured well for the fortunes of Joe Biden. So he was talking about the MPP using the Baumia situation to change a bit of his characterization. He's not the only one who's been saying that. There's been MPP who said that whenever the MPP gets the opportunity to change the characterization of their party, they may have to do that. And he thinks that Baumia is the one. We'll play the, the tape so that you can hear it for yourself. 23 minutes past the top of the hour at uh, 9 o'clock. We go on the touch screen, shouldn't we? And, uh, and, and, and get started. Now, tonight, we are settling the, um, the historical record of the MPP uh, the Delegates Congress. Uh, somehow or rather, we have to always remind you viewers that this is the, the special super delegates, which is to prune down the number. This is not the real Delegates Congress. So the videos that we're going to show you are videos of real Delegates Congress. Before then, though, I've always been interested in the people who are voting at the headquarters. Now, we're also hearing something from the Ashanti region in terms of how their votes will turn out. Uh, please get me the photograph of Chairman Wun to me, prepare it, and, and then you can have Wun to me here when I'm talking to viewers about how Ashanti region wants to vote. So every region is going to vote, so the voting is occurring in regional capitals. So those in the Bono region will be voting in Sunyane. Those in Greater Accra region will be voting in Accra, the Greater Accra office. And then there's the headquarters constituency, uh, which is made up of a few people that I'll show you on the touch screen. They are voting at the headquarters. Then those in the northern region uh, uh, are voting in Tamale. Uh, those in northeast are voting, I believe, in Mampusi. Those in Savannah are voting in Damango. Uh, those in Volta region are voting in Ho. Those in Oti region will vote in the Oti regional capital. Is that Dambai, I think? And then, um, and then the voting goes on and on. Our concern is the headquarters because we'll be covering that as well as covering across the country. So the headquarters uh, 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 polling station... It's not the most important polling station, but it has some very significant people there. We'll be aiming to see who wins in the headquarters polling station, isn't it? Stephen Intim is the chairman of the party. He's voting at the headquarters uh, polling station. Justin Kodia is the general secretary of the party. He will be announcing, uh, taking over for the electoral commission when they announce the results. He will now talk about it. Henry Nanabuache will be voting at the uh, headquarters. John Ajekum Kufo, if he doesn't vote by proxy and is voting by himself, he'll be voting at the headquarters. Uh, Rita Asobaye will also be voting at the headquarters. Then Gary Nimaku will be also uh, voting at the headquarters. Then you have Professor uh, A. Wayo. He will be voting at the headquarters as well. Then you have Ebenezer Sechi Hughes. He is one of the senior MPP people. He will be voting at the headquarters. You have Dr. Ekuamua Boatin voting at the headquarters as well. Kwame Adokufo, uh, Dr. Kwame Adokufo, former minister for defense. And also at some point interior will be voting at the headquarters. And then you have Professor Dominic Phobi. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about Professor Dominic Phobi. I'm sure that some of you, when you saw him, you're wondering uh, what we should say. We don't have anything to say. All we can say is that he's part of those voting at the headquarters, a former minister and an MPP star. Was Mr. Kwame, Dr. Kwame Donkofo Jo. Uh, he's originally based in Kumase. So I don't know whether he will join the Ashanti region vote or he will vote in Kumase. Or he'll come and vote in Accra. But Kwame Donkofojo is a very, very seasoned MPP person. He wrote the book entitled The History of the New Patriotic Party, which we have been referring to in some of our work. Uh, Dr. Donkofojo, good evening to you. Uh, he's pushing 90 by now, Dr. Donkofojo. I think he's about 90 years old. Lord Kwame Oblite, our good friend, will be voting at the headquarters. Uh, John Boydou uh, will be voting at the headquarters as well. Michael Omari Wadie will be voting there as well. Uh, Diana Kaikai will also be voting at the headquarters. And then the younger ones, Felicia Tete, will be voting at the headquarters. And Jay Hyde will also be voting at the headquarters. So we got the headquarters staff 
uh, right there, isn't it? Okay, welcome to the show. Now, let's get to the video. So, we're going all the way to Ghana Television. Okay, so our here is Chairman Wuntumi. Excellent. Now, Ashanti region is, is going to vote this way, as we've been told, because we, we told them we are covering it, so they have to tell us how they are doing it. All uh, ballots will be cast at uh, the law auditorium at the KNUST, Kwame Koma University of Science and Technology. That's the arrangement that Wuntumi and his people have made. All the, the ballots in Ashanti region will be cast at the, there are about 60 or so of them, their, their ballots will be cast at the law auditorium of the KNUST. That's where the action will be centered. Then when people cast the ballots, they will go back to their constituency. So if you are from, say, a Jusu constituency, which is my constituency, and um, you vote at KNUST, as a, so the person to vote from a Jusu would normally be the member of parliament, the Honorable John Kuma will be voting, and then the constituency chairman uh, would also be voting. So they will come and cast their ballots at KNUST, they will go back to the Ojiso constituency head office from where they will observe the proceedings on the screen. When they go back, they will be with the entire constituency. It was not just the two of them who came to vote. The entire constituency will be settled there and waiting for them. So that sort of connects to the fact that the vote that they are going to cast at KNUST is a vote of a superdelegate that has been agreed upon by the constituency people. So in Ashanti, when you cast the vote, you come back to the constituency and sit with the constituency people as they watch the counting or carrying on the screen, and they have a link that is showing all the various constituencies in Ashanti. All 46 constituencies in Ashanti uh, have been put on the link. 46 where the MPP have seats have been put on the link, so they will all link to that uh, video, and then you can see, and they're going to link media as well, so you can see this is a, a Kwadaso, this is Bantama, this is a Joso, this is Konongo, this is Kumeu, and you will see the entire constituency gathered there to watch the results. If their reaction is that they are not happy with the results, we will see it. If the reaction is that they are happy with the results, we will see it. All of this is intended to create a free, fair, transparent process uh, for the election. But that's the peculiar arrangement of, arrangement of the Ashanti region votes. I'm not sure how uh, the rest are going to be. I'll be in Kumase myself, I hope, and uh, I'll see Chairman Moon to me on Saturday and uh, we can eat fufu together uh, after the voting. It's 29 minutes to the top of the hour, 9 o'clock. Let's get into the history. We're going to show you the first documentary and then we'll be interviewing um, Alan Chamatin's camp about why they believe that this is uh, something this is an election that they should win or and why they are telling delegates that they should vote for Alan Chamati. So get me some Alan Chamati photographs and then we can we can put it out when the interview when we are conducting the interview. But I'm taking you to GTV Studios right now and this is a story of October nineteen ninety eight. So I'll tell you the background to the story. So the new patriotic party had formed in nineteen ninety two, as did many political parties at the time. They had gone into the nineteen ninety two election uh, and and had uh, been unsuccessful. The MPP had gathered nearly 40% of the votes together with opposition parties like General Eskin and others who got a few uh, votes. They had also, the MPP, uh, through Professor Dubwahe and, and, and uh, Nana Kufuadu and others, had led the MPP to boycott the parliamentary election to make a strong statement to the international community that the 1992 elections was flawed. That's how the MPP saw it. They were comparing 1992's elections to 1979 elections, and they argued that the 1992 election was flawed. And so to make the statement very strong, they decided that they would boycott the parliamentary election. The arrangement at that time, and we have to emphasize this all the time, uh, because all of us were in secondary school at the time. We had not started doing media, but we came to read about it. The arrangement in 1992 was that the presidential election was to be held in November on a particular day, and the parliamentary election was to be held later, subsequently. We believe, after reading all the material and, and, and assessing the psychological makeup of the PNDC, a lot of us analysts believe that it was done because the PNDC was sure that J.J. Rawlings will win the presidential election. They were not sure whether the NDC party will win the parliamentary election. So they wanted a presidential election first so that it will snowball into the, the atmosphere in terms of the parliamentary processes. So what, with J.J. having won the presidential election, it was easy uh, for him to sort of railroad the rest of the country, especially middle-level voters, to vote for the NDC in parliament because they would say the NDC had won already. 
The opposition also saw that the results of the presidential election, giving J.J. Rawlings a significant uh, chunk of the votes, 58%, very significant, meant for them that maybe they will perform again abysmally in the parliamentary election. Whether it was flawed or not is another matter, but this is, this is what we suspect was the assessment. And so they decided that they boycott the parliamentary election. So the parliamentary elections were boycotted, isn't it? All right. Then came the 1996 whole election, which was a debacle of sorts in terms of the president's relationship with the vice president and how the complicated situation of where a vice president becomes the running mate of the opposition candidates anyway. The MPP story then is that after 1992, people felt that Edouboahin has served his term. He didn't need to be candidate again. They also thought that the, the cream of all those politicians uh, who were there should be sort of shifted a little bit to a younger, vibrant, different person to be able to match the caliber of J.J. Rawlings and his youthfulness. Kwame Pienim emerged as the person to be this candidate, as, as, as we all know. Kwame Pienim had a, a fundamental problem to deal with at the time. Uh, if you get Kwame Pienim's photograph, I'll thank you. Kwame Pienim had a fundamental issue to deal with at the time. He, Kwame Pienim, had been in prison for 10 years. Okay? He had been uh, <coughs> incarcerated for an attempted coup d'etat. So Kwame Pienim was a candidate with a question mark whether he would be qualified by the national laws to run for president, having come out of 10 years of jail um, after being alleged to have staged a coup d'etat. Okay, so Kwame Pienim's candidature grew, and the people who supported Kwame Pienim's candidature, maybe I should have got the photographs, I'm sorry about that, viewers. Uh, Major Courage Kwashiga was one of those who supported Kwame Pienim's campaign. Charles Weku Brobe was one of those who supported Kwame Pienim's campaign. Kwesi Prat Jr. supported Kwame Pienim's campaign. And you had all of these young, vibrant people who were the heroes of the opposition at the time because they had just come out of the Alliance for Change very successful demonstrations in May 1995. So the Alliance for Change leadership appeared to be weighing towards Kwame Pienim's tickets for the MPP 1996 challenge for the leadership for the purpose of the December 96 election. Kwame Pienim's campaign was catching fire. And then the big issue came up about whether Kwame would be allowed to contest or not. The small question mark hinged on not so much the activity that he was jailed for, which is purporting to overthrow a government, but whether or not the government in charge was a legitimate government that should, hold, that, that should gain the protection of the 1992 constitution. Thank you very much. That's uh, uh, Kwame Pienim, as we call him today. So the question that was hanging on Kwame Pienim's neck was whether or not the activity that he conducted was against an illegitimate government and therefore it is correct or whether the government even though it's a military government had gained legitimacy or what we call legal legitimacy because there was an establishment proclamation which is like a constitution protecting the military junta the court held the view that once the, the government had been established and that an establishment proclamation had been done and people were naturally obeying the pndc government pnc's action was treasonable in the circumstances the court held that Kwame Pienim was not qualified to run for president. It was a devastating blow to Kwame Pienim supporters, to Major Kwashiga, to Dr. Naho Tamaklo, I have to mention him. It was part of the Kwame Pienim thing, uh, Charles Wekubebe and others. But that also created a small difficulty between Kwame Pienim and the party, the MPP party, because whilst Kwame Pienim filed the matter to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court was yet to hear the matter when the MPP Congress date was due. Pienim then sought an injunction against the party that the party should not hold the Congress until the Supreme Court had pronounced on his matter because he was a frontline candidate, which he was. Uh, the matter went to court and the MPP were expected to make a representation in the court to determine and support Kwame Pienim that yes, the court should finish hearing Kwame Pienim's matter before the Congress. The MPP was a bit lukewarm. The uh, leadership of the party, Peter Ajete at the time, was not particularly, didn't seem particularly interested in this matter. The MPP, therefore, did not submit any representation to the court. Kwame Pienim was not happy with it. Eventually, he lost the case. It was a case entitled a Kwam, Rosemary Kwam and Kwame Pienim. And uh, Kwame Pienim lost the case. But he was still the most popular candidate. If the election had been held the day after Kwame Pienim lost the case in court and he was on the ballot, Kwame Pienim would most likely have won that Congress. So what happened? Kwame Pienim then threw his weights, or it was arranged that Kwame Pienim supported to support J.A. Kufour. And that's how J.A. Kufour defeated uh, um, uh, Charles, uh, Professor Dubois, and J. Kufour became the candidate in 96. 
He could not select a running mate from the party because the running mate was the vice president as the arrangement by Al-Hadi Banda uh, um, created. Okay? Al-Hadi Banda was the chairman of the CPP at the time. And he spoke to Kufo and said that he was going to fund the campaign, but he would fund it on the basis that Colin Kensen Akar, who was the vice president, who had fallen out with J.J. Rollins, should be on the ticket for Jonathan Jacob Kufo. So all of that happened. And then the election went through. 1996 election went. And uh, J.J. won again, 58%. Okay. The MPP made a decision then, like they have done now with the 17 aspirants and superdelegates and all that. That was the first decision about timing. They made a decision that they, they voting and electing their presidential candidate of the year of the election was getting dangerous. They didn't have enough time to campaign. It happened in 96, happened in 92 as well. So they decided that for the 2000 election, let's not wait till 2000 before we elect a candidate. Let us elect the candidate two clear years before. So as soon as 1996 election ended, campaign began for the next flag bearer. Jay Kufo was in pole position. He believed that people were not going to challenge him or that he was not going to get any formidable challenge. Then came up Nanado Dankwa Kufuado, who presented a particularly formidable challenge uh, to, to, to John Ajekum Kufo. The, the Kanana Kufuado's challenge was led by Stanley Adri Blankson, Kwabene Japon, a lot of the young executive forum, Philip Addison and others, Joe Gatti. They, they, real, they rallied behind Nanado Kufuado and made Nanado Kufuado's uh, uh, candidature substantial and, and very formidable. So the video you're going to watch now is what happened in Sunyani. The Congress was first to be held in Koforidia. It was Akufado supporters thought that the venue was changed from Koforidia to Sunyani because they thought Koforidia was too close to Chebi, where he was a member of parliament and where they thought that he had some control and this, the proximity between Chebi and Koforidia was too was, was, was short. And so it will give advantage to Akufado. So they shifted the, the events to Sunyani. That's what Akufado supporters alleged. I don't know. They shifted the event to Sunyani so that it will give advantage to Kofo, who is a Kumasi person. And Sunyani and Kumasi are about the same. The Atta Odoi Sykes at this time was the chairman of the party. It is believed that Atta Odoi Sykes was the chairman of the party. He was a PFP man and John Kofo was a PFP man. So the Akufado people allege that Odoi must have done some you know, machinations to get the Congress to Sunyani. But that's how politics works, isn't it? What you are going to watch is at the Sunyani Center when the Congress ended. And this is the declaration of the final results of the MPP contest in 1998 to select the candidate for 2000. Have a look. The conference of the New Patriotic Party ended in Sunyani yesterday with the re-election of Mr. J.A. Kufo as the party's flag bearer for the year 2000 elections. Earlier in the day, supporters and members of the party had thrown the streets of the Bunohafu regional capital with placards and pictures of the contestants. Although the atmosphere was charged, there was no incident reported as security personnel took every step to ensure peace and comportment. <laughs> The national chairman of the party, Mr. S. A. Odoi Sykes, who set the tone for the Congress, outlined the party's strategy for the year 2000 elections. Voting was supervised by officials of the Electoral Commission. Each of the 2000 delegates from the 200 constituencies had a chance to cast his vote. <laughs> Deputy Chairman of the Electoral Commission, Mr. Safu Kantanka, announced the results. Seven votes. That would be 
to work with Mr. Kufo in the next elections. I can assure you, when the people speak, the delegates have spoken here, we have to respect their choice. And I can assure you that once I congregate is a year before, all the help that I can give to make him win power for MPP. So that's, uh, that's very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> that was history, isn't it? Uh, do you have some text messages on what we've been doing so far? Yes. Yes, okay, so let's take the text messages. Let's see what you have. Okay, so this is coming from Atambra this morning. It says, good evening, Paul. In fact, you are one of the best journalists we have in this country. Hello. Keep doing your best for my Wait, mother, Ghana. Saying, saying coming something. from Charles to say, Charles says it will be better for the NPP delegate to vote for Baumia to rebrand the party from the Akan party. This coming from Mahami Adams. Mahami says, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the best to lead our dear NPP party. Good evening to you. Good evening, Ghana. Nana Yao says, Ken was the choice, but his own utterances has come to haunt him. Let's all be guided. It's too late for him. Um, Antoinette. Cornelius Opokumensa seems very surprised to see Dr. Apreku. He says, hey, Dr. Apreku, so he contested in 1998, and he wants to contact this time around as well. Abdullah Akimbo says, successful indeed are the believers who are humble in their work, but we are all the way. Kwame Dakwa Young says the 2024 elections, aside going to be an election of competence, it's also going to be an election of character, and Alan has that unblemished credibility. It's instructive for delegates to admit that whoever emerges as the flag bearer has a difficult task of even convincing our supporters first before the floating voters, and Alan has that temperament. Charles Adu says from Gumwa Jaman, Dr. Kunedu Apreku would have become a perfect flag bearer without internal election if seniority were the priority. 
Now, Modesto's Gold says, the five to be selected are important but not critical. It's obvious many vowed for one and seem evident to be their favorite. The norm has been of a required credential and that of the elite favorite. Yet, the dearest should be watchful because the account saying says, but, the, but again, it's a race and the world must be swift of its prey. Two voices will be resonated in the ears of the masses, that of the parrots and the dog, whose would be heard and whose will be understood. Who's, who is the Messiah and who is the Macquarie? Okay. Um, Master Planner watching us from Kintampo says, Dr. Baomia is number 10 on the ballot paper. NPP special delegate should vote for him massively come Saturday. Greetings to lawyer Jerry Ahmed, incoming Wajagbari MP. Um, lastly, Al Haji Bob City says, Paul, assalamu alaikum to you, your viewers, and the hardworking team. Some aspirants are now talking about November 4th as their last hope. Whether to intercept a guest on November 4th, the results will be the same. Dr. Baomia will secure more than 70% of the votes in almost all the 16 regions. Greetings to Echo Vincent Asifua, NP of Old Tafo constituency. Angelo? Great. Kojo's office says, Kerry Ohne Ojepong, uh, the people's choice. Oseki Daniel says the establishment candidates, uh, he says in brackets, Baomia, will win the super delegates, but the ordained candidate, Chief Allen, will surely win the November one to become the flag bearer. Abdul Razak disagrees, saying Dr. Baomia is the only person who can win power or election for the MPP. He's fearless, incredible, and respectful. And Dr. Baomia is the only one who can win Mahama and the NDC. Adams says number 10. Uh, Isaac says Dr. Baomia will not get less than 70%. In the main Congress, he will also not get less than 60%. Nana Kusi says, personally, I prefer Kennedy at Japan, but they won't vote for him because he speaks the truth. I think Bob Mel will win because he's the, he says, in quotes, establishment candidate. Moving on, uh, Kojo, sorry, Atom, Atom says, uh, Alan all the way. And Andrew says, won't be surprised if Baumia emerges the winner. But people like Alan and Kennedy can also make some difference in the superdelegate Congress. Magdalene Chapman says, I'm torn between Alan, Ken, and Baumia. I wish them very well. And lastly, uh, from Kaswa Republic, this message says, the candidate that wins Saturday's election will automatically win November 4th and lead the NPP to victory come 2024. Uh, undoubtedly, it's simply Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya. And then again, from Junior Akbar, he says DMB is the best man for the job. The DMB movement is a serious movement, and we are not joking. Well, back to you, Paul. Okay, so let's get to the interview now. We have Mr. Bachman with us. He speaks for uh, Alan Kujoche Martin, who is... Uh, what's Alan on the ballot? Number two. Number two on the ballot, okay. So, Mr. Bachman, you are from Central Region. Would you, do you have a vote? No, I don't vote. You don't have a super delegates vote? Yeah, I don't have vote. You have a regular vote? I don't make? have vote. But you are a former Maslog uh, chief executive, isn't it? At yeah. Central Region. Yes. Uh, you're not a constituency person? No, I was, I was youth organizer for eight years. Cape Coast for, the, for the reg Central Region youth no, organizer? Cape Coast, when it was one constituency. Oh, a constituency youth organizer? Yeah, for eight Okay, so you're a constituency executive? Yeah. Form, former, former, yeah. Executive. So if you were still a constituency executive, you'd have voted yeah. tomorrow? Okay. Now, so... Why do you think it should be Alan Chemati? Yeah, Paul, um, it's a very important question you ask. But then, Paul, uh, before I start to talk about why it must be Alan, mm -hmm. um, I just want to tell you something that happened between, uh, something happened that the role I played in Legon in your election. Oh, I see. The Nooks election, yeah. I was, I was the, the chief strategist behind Domsen's victory. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we have that, you know, that connection already. Yeah. On campus. Yeah. Um, for, you know, for, for us to be able to understand why it must be Allen, mm -hmm. you should be able to do proper analysis, strategic analysis to establish that fact. And Paul, you need to understand that MPP is a production unit. We produce candidates to sell for votes. And because MPP is, is production unit and we sell in a market, it is always important that when you are looking at who is the best candidate, you juxtapose the person with the market. When I hear people talk about the candidate, that is the product. Sometimes I wonder if the they haven't taken their time to understand the issues. 
Because you can sell a good product in a wrong market. So the most important thing to discuss or to talk about is the nature of the market in which the person will be sold. Because if we are production units, if you are, if you are voting for national chairman and general secretary, there's nothing like market. So we can look at their competence, we can look at their contribution to the party and end it there. But once we are producing to sell, it is important, as I mentioned, to look at the market. And also, on the market, there's also a competitor. So you look at the competitor on the market as well. What is it that the competitor is offering? The product of the competitor. You check that one too. Then you look at the strategy of your competitor. So you don't start from production. You start from all these analysis. You analyze the nature of the political market. You analyze the kind of competitor you have on the market and the strategy of the competitor. And also, you go back and look at the, the previous elections, the result, how did the result go? If you, you compare- Previous primaries or no, national elections? It, national elections. Yes, very important. Because you, you need to look at, let's say, take two, let's say 2016, 2020. Mm -hmm. If you move from 2016 to 2020, how did the election go? Did MPP rise in terms of performance? No. Or MPP fail in terms of performance? Mm -hmm. So if you have this information, that is the nature of the market, the nature of the competitor, who is your competitor, and the strategy of the competitor, that will inform you to be able to come up with a strategy, one, to counter your competitor's strategy, and to also present a product that can easily be bought by the market. Because the marketability of any product, Paul, depends more on the nature of the market in which that product will be sold mm -hmm. than even the quality of the product. I normally use examples. If you, Paul, I believe you use, maybe you are using iPhone 14. Mm -hmm. That is the, in terms of quality, that is the best. Mm -hmm. Take iPhone 14 and Yam, the Yam phone, we normally call it Yam. Take these two products to a certain market in Ghana here. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the Yam will be bought and the iPhone 14 will be in your hand. Because people cannot afford. Yes, or they don't understand the, its usage. Mm -hmm. Take the same two products to another market. Immediately, somebody will buy the iPhone and the Yam will be, will be in your hands for, mo for more than one year. Nobody will buy. So you realize that the problem is not the iPhone. Where, when the iPhone was not bought, it, it, it wasn't because the, the iPhone wasn't good. But it's affordability, the denominator in the analogy that you make. It's affordability. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. That, so that's what I'm saying. It is the market that determines what to produce. The point I, I want to make is that... Yeah, but this your analogy is affordability. So maybe you want to say some people buy orange, and some people buy pineapple, because depending on their culture. So the, that no, may the, be the crack, better the, analogy. The crux, this the crux this of the analogy is, is money. No, the crux of the analogy. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not always money. iPhone versus YAM is, is affordability. Yes, what I'm saying is that the crux of the analysis is that it is the market that determines what to produce. Yes, yes, I hear that. I hear you on that one. Do, the, you get the, the point. Is, yeah. So, for me, if you, if you, let's say, let's start from NDC strategy, the product NDC is offering. Mm -hmm. Who is NDC product on the market? John Mahama. John Mahama. Who is John Mahama? John Mahama is a Nortner. He's a, he's a Gonja man. He's a Christian. He's a former president. And he's married to uh, Lordina. Lordina. From Kintampo. From Kintampo. And also a Christian. Mm -hmm. And from Bono, right? Yes, Kintampo is Bono. Yeah. So this is, this is the product of the NDC. What do they That's offer? all you can say about the product. Nothing to do with John Muhammad's politics, what he represents, his philosophy, no. his achievements. Paul, Nothing Paul, to do with that. Paul, let me, let me, let me talk about because, I yeah. mean, okay. uh, yeah. No problem. So, so allow me to do my yeah. analysis. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Yes. So if you look at that, that this is what the NDC is presenting. Mm -hmm. Then check NDC strategy, Paul. Mm -hmm. I know you are, you, are, you are very good with analysis yes. and strategic mm -hmm. analysis. Now check NDC strategy. And that would inform MPP as to who to present. Now, mm -hmm. recently, NDC removed Aoun Idrisu yes. as minority leader. Yeah. And Ad Averji, his deputy, yeah. was also removed. Yes. In their place, 
Atufosu was brought in. Yes. Amabua was brought in. Yes. Okay. Now check this. NDC removed Haun Idrisu. Strategically. People didn't understand. People were emotional about it. But from a strategic point of view, as a strategist, what I see is that John Mahama satisfies the Northern connection. In politics, we have something called connection. John Mahama satisfied the Northern connection. So they don't need a Northern again to get that connection with the North. So he was removed. Aveji was also removed because Fifikwete has now become the general secretary of the party. So they don't need Aveji to connect to the region. And that is their, even their stronghold. Now, in their place, they picked two people from the swing region in Central A, in uh, two, two swing regions, like Western and Central. These regions are swing regions. And look at the strategy. They replaced those two people with two Akans. That is uh, Atufosin and Amabua. What, I, what they are doing is that they are making a statement that, that these two regions now occupy important position in the NDC because they want to connect with this region. Now, when they have done that, to connect with this swing region, because in politics, Paul, you don't, when you want to win an election, your focus should be on the swing regions. And that is how NDC is going about it. They are being very Let's smart again. It. When you want to win election, election, your, your focus. focus should be on the swing races. Yes. Yeah, because that's what you are saying. Yeah, your strong. When you want to win election, your yeah. focus should be on the swing. Yeah, goals. so you have, you know, you have your stronghold. Not on your stronghold. I'm coming. You have your stronghold. Mm -hmm. So you maximize your vote. You consolidate, and you maximize your vote in your stronghold. But you don't jump to your opponent. Um, how do you call it? Stronghold. You you target the swing regions where. The, your, the, where they can swing easily to your opponents. So central and western are swing regions. But if you have ability to go into your opponent's stronghold, why don't you do that? Paul, strategically, it doesn't make sense. Rawlings used to do that successfully. No, Paul, it doesn't make sense. Now, if you talk of 1992, you, Paul, you just mentioned 1992 election in Ghana, and 1996 election. If you're in Ghana and you want to make sense out of it, it will be difficult. You know the, the kind of election we had. But the point I'm making is that if NDC, when they have done that, when they have replaced a Nortner with an account person, a Votarian with an account person, they turn, now turn and tell you that you are an account party. Mm -hmm. So the point is that MPP shouldn't bring an account again. Because if you bring an account person, NDC will say you are an account party. Now they are targeting your account regions. Mm -hmm. Yet they are telling you that you shouldn't bring an account. So if you are a smart person and you consider the fact that in the last election, we won seven regions. NDC won nine regions. Out of the seven regions that we won, six of them are account regions. So NDC is telling you that where your strength is, no, but the, the MPP being an Akan party is not is it start now? It's not the NDC. It's been said forever. No, but from, Paul, it's been said from '69. But Paul, the, the, the real story about MPP being an Akan party is not even from MPP. It's from Progress Party. Yes. It's a '69 phenomenon. There was no NDC in '69, so no. it's not something NDC is saying. It's something that MPP have had issues with no. since the Buzia period. Because and you know the situation, you know why? No, no. Paul, but Paul, you know why that happened? No, Paul. Yeah. But the point is that the current narrative is that the John Mahama made a statement to that effect. Oh, he's just repeating what happened in the '79 campaign. It was a big deal in the '79 no, campaign it, that the MPP is an Akan party. The Buzia tradition is an Akan party. '92, it wasn't an issue. '96, it wasn't an issue. Oh, it was. It, it was. wasn't an when issue. The party was formed. No, no, no. It wasn't it. an issue. Now, I'll tell you that '92 presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. The Vincent Assisi wrote mm -hmm. an article on each of them and said, why are they all a can? Okay. So Malik Al-Hassan Yakubu mm -hmm. was a pleasurable welcome to the 1996 contest. Mm -hmm. Because Vincent Assisi, who was the director of communications at the time for mm -hmm. the NDC, mm -hmm. made a big deal out of an article in the graphic. Who, 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 no, who was the director of communications of what? NDC. So, Vincent Assisi. So the NDC factor again. Yeah, but he referred to Buzia. When no, you talk about NPP no, as an account party, no. there's something that happened. <laughs> Paul, something happened during the Buzia regime. Maybe you don't know it, but something happened that then started this whole thing. Paul, 
The point I'm making is that John Mamba recently made a statement yes, to yes. that effect. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, that, that is how we are. Mm -hmm. And that is why some of our people said, we don't need to present an account. And I'm saying that your competitor, mm -hmm. the strategy your competitor is using is to target your account regions, swing regions, central and western. And when, as I've told you, when you want to win an election, the first thing, the first principle is to consolidate and maximize, possibly, in your stronghold, which is the, the first principle. The second one, you don't jump into your opponent's, um, how do you call it, um, stronghold. You target the swing regions. And I'm saying that NDC is targeting your, your swing regions. That is why they will place Haole Bisu and Aveji with um, Atufosin and uh, Amabua. So strategically, okay, I get yeah, to get the point. So strategically, if MPP would want to win this election, you need to have a counter strategy. You need to have a candidate who can easily connect with these two regions. That is the, the Western and the Central region. I thought you were talking about an MPP candidate that can consolidate the base. You yes. think a candidate who can connect with the swing regions? Yeah. That, that should be the choice. No, Paul, MPP should be looking Paul, for a candidate who can connect to the swing regions. Oh, allow me to do my analysis. I just want to understand because I thought you were coming towards stronghold no, consolidation. I, that's what, the point I'm making is that if you want to win an election, mm -hmm. The vote that you had previously, previously mm -hmm. that gave you victory, yeah. is where you target. That's, that's, your, that's your stronghold. Your stronghold. Yes. yes. Consolidate your stronghold. You consolidate and you maximize, possibly. So that's, that's how you choose a candidate. No. That is, that, that is how strategically. Mm -hmm. Look at a candidate that can help you to consolidate. In your base. Your base. Okay. Great. From there, you don't, that's what I'm saying. From there, you don't jump straight. No, so that's first, you mean? Yeah, the first, first is consolidate your base. Yes. So find a candidate who connects to your base. Yes. Who can win the, the vote in the base. Okay. Yes. The second one is to target the swing regions. The swing regions. Yeah, be, before you talk about opponents. Opponents. I get that, I get that uh, tripartite analysis. Yeah. Consolidate your base first. Yes. So a candidate that has the potential to consolidate the base. Yeah. Then like, that, that candidate must also have potential for the swing region. Yeah. And then you can talk about the opponents at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we have this analysis lead us to why it should be allowed. So that is, uh, that is a counter strategy I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, in the last election, Paul, this is what happened. NDC won nine regions. Mm -hmm. Possibly, they can win the nine regions again. Mm -hmm. Now, the only region that can, that's also a swing, is Greater Accra. But the eight regions they won, I believe they can even win a, like, the Greater Accra, the nine regions again. Now, all the nine regions NDC beat us. They beat us with a difference of 1,151,292. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. That's the, that's the figure they had. Yeah. Now, in Ashanti region alone, mm -hmm. we beat NDC with a difference of 1,142,000. Correct. So, so Ashanti cancels out. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the point there. Yes. The point is that Ashanti alone stood against the other regions. And the difference NDC gave us was only 8,617. Correct. It means yeah. Ashanti region is very, very important. Very important region. Very important, yes. yes. What's, what then yeah. was the analysis? Yeah. So the analysis is that you need to get a candidate mm -hmm. that can first consolidate your gains. Correct. And also maximize, possibly. Now, because the, previously you had 1.79 million. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can get 2 million votes in Ashanti region, mm -hmm. And people can possibly or easily okay, win. So we're coming to the candidate. So consolidate uh, the base and maximize it. it maximize Why it. is that, Alan? Yes. Because of the connection. Is it politics? We connection. Have connection. No. If, you say, if I say connection, Paul, you understand. No, but you don't understand. I've, because I've no, just so mentioned. I want to narrow it on that. Must the candidate come from there? No. Because you can have two candidates. Mm -hmm. One comes from somewhere else. Another mm -hmm. comes from Ashanti. Mm -hmm. Ashanti people might prefer the somewhere else. No, Paul. Oh. Depending on what the party stands for, Buzia was not an Ashanti. Oh. But Ashanti's rallied behind oh. him in a massive oh. way. Let me tell you, simple question. If you put Alan, any other candidate in Ashanti region, to give us over 2 million votes, I believe Alan can easily give us 2 million votes more than any other candidate. Why? Because, I've told you, because he's got connection with the region. And apart from that, you know, Alan... Is it a social connection? Is it a cultural connection? Is it a tribal connection? Is it a... Party connections and intellectual. What connection is that? Connection. Tribal connection. So that's, that's important? It's very important. That's, oh. that's where I'm worried a little bit. Oh, because Bussia was not from there. Oh, don't be worried. You know why you shouldn't be worried? Mm -hmm. Because people come here and make arguments mm -hmm. that somebody can win us not. Why? Yes. Because of the same connection factor. Yes. But when it is being made, 
in Ashanti region, you know, it becomes a problem. Well, I've heard that so, argument so, no, no, being so, made. No, somebody, some, some, no, the I've same heard people. That, let, let me explain to you because I, I've, I've been doing the research. I've heard the argument being made for Dr. Baumia, and I was concerned that, ah, what is, why do you say that Dr. Baumia can win Northern region? Then I go to the analysis. If you check 2008 election results, NDC led the MPP by 80%. Professor Mills gained 80% in 2008. And in Parliament, the NDC were leading by nine seats out of, I think, 16 or so. They had nine out of 16. If you fast forward to 2021, uh, 2020's results, you see a dramatic change. The 80% lead of the NDC in 2008 was whittled down in 2020 to 60,000, which represented something like 50-something percent, a percentage point of about three. In Parliament, the MPP actually won it. But, but so Paul, you can see that when somebody Paul, says, Dr. Unless, unless we can say that's not Dr. Baumia, which is, we can say no, that. No, no, but, 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 but Paul, you see? Uh, so you can see he I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't like I don't like to talk about other candidates. Okay, I get it, I get it. But I'm just explaining why, for us as media, I, I, because, we support no, no, the view no, no, that Dr. Baumia has something no, to do with Paul, the connection in the North. Because it's, it's, it's very fireable. Paul, let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. That the connection thing that I've been talking about, two, two things. They said... A candidate can connect easily with the North and can connect easily with the Zongos and yes. give her the Zongo vote. Yes, because so, it's happened before. No, so, so you believe that a candidate can connect? I don't believe until I've seen the results. And I have seen the results. And which, you can check. Which results? The Zongo votes that MPP has been getting since 2008 up to 2020. Before, 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 you before, see, before, in fact, in the three northern your party is leading. Oh, how, many, how many Zongo, how many Zongo, Zongo uh, did MPP win in the last election? No, we didn't win any. So, so what, 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 what's the okay, point? Okay, so you, if you can forget about the Zongos, even though that's important. No, no, but, 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 no, no, but, but, but oh no. So you see, John Mahama won uh, the, the Greater Accra situation. Uh -huh. John Mahama won Greater Accra by a very little, small difference, uh -huh. 50,000. Uh -huh. It was because what he was getting in the Zongos, the gap closed. Yeah. It was closing in all, Nima closed. No. Everywhere was closing. And then in the three northern regions, your party, MPP, mm -hmm. is actually in the lead on parliamentary seats. But the parliamentary seat, Paul, Which it's is just, shocking. No, Paul, interestingly, let me tell you this. I, don't, I didn't want to talk about the parliamentary seat, but if you brought it up. Yeah. Now, if you want to understand the situation in parliamentary seats, mm -hmm. start from 96. How many votes did MPP have? In the north? Yeah. How many votes or how many seats? How many seats, sorry, how many seats did the MPP have? I have to check that. Three votes. Isn't it? Uh -huh. Give me three seats. Yeah, yeah three seats. Why yeah. Saini and, and yeah, uh, Mustafa seats. and three seats. Yeah, somebody. we had three okay. seats, right? Uh -huh. Then it moved to six. That is, if you go to, mm -hmm. if you come to... In 2008, yeah. it yeah. was nine out of 16 for NDC. 2008. No, so 2000, how many seats before, when um, uh, 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 late Ali Muhammad, mm -hmm. vice president, was leaving, how many seats did we have? In the that's 2008. Region? That's when he yeah. left. Six. No. Because that's what the northern region had... Uh, nine plus six, so that's sixteen. NDC had nine. We can check the figures. Paul, check the figures, Paul, Check the figures. Check, but it's something like that. No, and, no, Paul, check. And Paul, Professor Paul. Mills got eighty no, no. percent of Paul. the votes in Voter Paul, in check, Northern check. Region. When Ali, what, tell when us what Ali you know. was going, mm -hmm. we had eleven. Two thousand eight. We had eleven. You 11 mean eleven votes. seats? Sorry, eleven seats. Okay. Why, why, why no, they can't check. Them? Don't worry. You, you tell us what you know. Yeah, Paul. I'm Please coming. check, and then mm -hmm. I'm coming because yeah. I. I just want us to get the figures right because this parliamentary thing, you need to. The point you're going to make is that it's, it's not true that MPP has come from behind to lead in parliament. Is that the point you no, want I'm to make? I'm coming, Paul. I'm coming. Yeah. I think we need to get the, a established there. It will help all of us. All right, let's bring in Krabi Fadate uh, as we wait for our guest. And this uh, is now nine minutes past 10. We should be wrapping up on the alarm segment very soon. Uh, Nkrabi Afadate has been singing praises to God at the beginning of the last Congress. It's something we want to break up with. Let's have a look. Oh, the commercial break. Yes, indeed, it's better. Let's take the commercial break right now, and then we can do the Nkrabi Afadate later. We'll take a short break. we come back. We'll wrap up with the Alan interview. Oh. Dr. Gideon Boakou is in the studio to talk to us as well.
enjoy the fruits of your labor they say but as humans aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes it often becomes challenging if not impossible to use our stairways day in day out with portable american pneumatic vacuum elevators pvs you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes it's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices the original comes in three custom made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people my name is john and this is my long time crash my cookie dipped in strawberry yogurt on this scorching hot afternoon on our way back from a long job hunt, we met this good Samaritan who offered us a Six weeks later. We are special wedding reception for our bride and groom. And there she is, my cookie, dipped in someone else's yogurt. Who holds the mula? Holds the shot. Play game that games. The easiest lottery to play and win. Four numbers from zero to nine, up to three times daily to become one of our daily lucky winners. Dial star 946 hash to play now. Or you can also play online at www.gamepackgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. Betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement. A whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life. Where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions all in the palm of your hand visit betway.com.gh terms and conditions apply betway is regulated by the gaming commission of ghana no under 18 bet responsibly betway bet your way I didn't know here. TV, fridge, freezer, air conditioning, gas cooker, washing machine, smartphone, sound system, water dispenser, microwave, blender, rice cooker, kettle, and an iron. So I ban high sense smartphone to Kradia. Yeah, TT so more than more than a high sense factory direct promo. It's in your madada noa. Emma light bill a kuno. Fasi baby. Never give for four. A fifty twenty eighth August. I come from second September. Be be away showroom no. Say they are torn no. Say na ye torn. Wait there. Ya titi swa brosso. I tell you who high sense. Everyday prices for everyday people. Sometimes the unexpected happens, and the hero falls down in his own story. But he needs not stay down for long. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance is your trusted health partner. Whether an individual building a business, with Cosmopolitan Health Insurance, your medical care is our concern. For the best health insurance solutions for corporate institutions, groups and associations, families and individuals, choose Cosmopolitan Health Insurance from our over 700 accredited health service providers nationwide. Call us on 0302-540-668 or 0501-678-547 for all your health insurance solutions. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance, your medical care is our concern. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Kwa, when you fear for you now, and Kobo the makers in Sri Anu, the road. The pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited. I'm up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. to makers is here. This is what I call quintessential immaculability. Jamu! She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samaizoko Junction. At the K Pharmacy Dining. Oh, yeah, Fatherman, Boga Junction. A shaman, Valco Flat, Kumasi, a Hinema Kokobin, a Safu Wachi Hospital Junction. Number nine market. Joe and 
tell man and dad about the maker's blessing attack from 0552 222 253 and 0552 222 254. Terms and conditions apply. The same and got your Okay, and tell them if, when the, if the graphics are ready. Oh, sorry, viewers, we are back on. <laughs> the graphics will be ready, please. Sorry, sorry, viewers, about that. Uh, Mr. Backman is still with us. There's been a big interaction here in the studio because somebody called and um, had issues. I explained to the caller, Mr. Francis Boche, I explained to you that uh, if you have a banter with Mr. Backman, you can do it on another platform. Tonight, he's here to represent Alain Chamartin. Juan Francis Boche, who is watching us. Good evening, Francis Boche, again. He's very, very livid about something that happened in the central region between him and Mr. Backman, but that's not our concern tonight. Our concern is that he's here speaking for Alan Chamartin, and that's how we are called him, the Ketsis. Nothing to do with anything that happened in Cape Coast constituency. Okay, Mr. Boche, thank you. We've heard you, but uh, we'll talk about it another time. Now, another text from Cape Coast comes in, and Mr. Backman, I'd like you to respond to this one. It says, good evening, Apostle Paul. Kindly ask Alan's rep in your studio that after resigning from the MPP party, Cape Coast constituency, in 2008, he's back again to tell us to vote for his candidate. Funny, Cape Coast North, South and Central is voting for Dr. Baumia. Alan Chamartin knows he's from Central Region when he's contesting for an election. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm concerned about the resignation that he raises. Did you resign from the MPP? Oh. Is there any record that you have resigned from oh, the MPP? Uh, that's what I'm saying. That Even with the Mr. Bocho one, factually mm -hmm. inaccurate. Yeah. Now, they said I resigned in 2008. Yeah, after 2008. 2010. Context. It's even the person doesn't even know MPP. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know ins and outs of MPP. 2010. 2010. I contested for Duncan, regional secretary position. For regional secretary position. So how okay. can I resign? But did you run as MP for the party? No. I was parliamentary uh, aspirant mm -hmm. in 2004 mm -hmm. against Honorable Christine Checha. Mm -hmm. In 2008, I was disqualified. For what? Maybe you need to ask those who disqualify me because I was the youth organizer of the party and the presiding member of the party. Yes, so you were disqualified. Yeah. But didn't they tell you why they disqualified but Paul, you? I don't want to go this into This 2008. 2008. Okay. And if you remember 2008, some of us became yeah. victims of the situation at the time. The situation of 2007? Yeah, 2007. Okay. I was one of, one of the victims. All right. I don't want to go there mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, but the point I was making, Paul, I was making an analysis. And I think I can continue. Yes, you can. One, just, just for your analysis, somebody sends a text connected to that. It says that, please ask him, John Mahama has been winning the Volta region. Professor Mills won the Volta region. They are not from there. Do they have a connection with the people? It says, no. That, that's part of it. But uh, the data has come now for the MPP's parliamentary performance. Absolutely. So we'll put it on the screen. And it's uh, just so that before you start. In 2008, NDC got 20 seats in the three northern regions. NPP got four. In 2012... And 2008 is when Dr. Baumia first came on the ballot as a running mate. 2012, MPP got 11, NDC got 6. Like NDC got 11, MPP got 6. In 2016, in the three northern regions, MPP got 9, NDC got 9. In 2020, in the three northern regions, MPP gets 16, NDC get 15. So from a deficit of 20 to 4 in 2008, by 2020, 
NPP is now leading the parliamentary seats in the northern region. The analysis that many researchers make, which I made also, is that this is because of the influence of Dr. Baumia. No, pa, and that oh, is the basis oh, for them saying that oh, he has a connection oh, with the north. Oh, you see, somebody has contested his position as MP. Check, you check the presidential vote and the parliamentary votes and see whether the person who contested as a parliamentary candidate had no influence within his constituency. That it took somebody to make, to, to make the person win his seat. Some of them even had more votes than the, pres the presidential candidate. But why has it been growing? <laughs> what no, the point no, of no, is valid. No, exactly. But why has so it been growing? So, 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 it's a, a trend that is growing. No, no. I'm, I'm telling you, some of our candidates are powerful. Even more than the presidential candidate. So somebody has won a seat and you want to credit to somebody's account? Okay. I get your point. So we shouldn't, no, we shouldn't credit them. No. The person, we went there, the, the, person, the person went there as vice president, vice president. So check the presidential vote and compare. That, that has also been increasing. No, no. Oh, for sure. That no, has been I'm, significant. I'm, I'm saying compare 2000, uh, 2016 and 2020 and check. No, but I'm saying that the presidential votes I'm have saying, even I'm, been more significant since 2008. I'm, I'm saying, I'm because saying in 2008, that, Mills won 80%. Paul, I'm saying that check 2016 and 2020 presidential votes. Mm -hmm. And because somebody has contested his seat. The person has won the seat. They say you want to give it to you want to give that credit to somebody. Are you speaking only in respect of 2020 or no. in respect of Paul, the Paul, entire MPP's Paul, rise in the northern any, region? Any objective person who wants to do proper analysis wouldn't credit anyone for the seat warning. It, it was the MP. I mean, collect, this is collective something that was done there. Uh, MPs, some of the MPs had even more votes than the presidential candidate. So check. So Paul, that point is. Okay, not so correct. we cannot attribute or no, we no, shouldn't no, no, no. attribute. We shouldn't. We shouldn't, we shouldn't attribute this to Dr. Baumia. No, we shouldn't. I we mean, should attribute it to no. the individual Paul, MPs. Paul, Paul. The po let me, let me, let me, if you, are, if you permit me. The mm. point I'm making is that, as I started, we are going to sell a product. And people don't want, to talk, the people don't want us to talk about the market. Yeah, well, tell us about the market. What's yes. in the market? So the nature of the political market. Yes. The candidate. Yeah, I mean, no. yeah, you can speak to you, no problem. No, no, no. no. If you, if, you, if you select a candidate or you elect a candidate, certainly you have to go and sell the person in a political market. Correct. Yes. And I'm saying that you can't ignore the nature of the market. Tell us the nature of this market. No, five features mm -hmm. of the market. Mm -hmm. First, the market is very competitive. It's a very competitive market. Since 1992, NDC has won four. MPP, we are, win, we are ending our four, fourth one. And so, in the last election, if you look at what happened in Parliament, the fact that the parliament itself was almost divided. It's divided with one independent candidate. Mm -hmm. The fact that NDC, in, in terms of performance, improved in parliament. Improved in, in, even, the, even the presidential. Mm -hmm. So that should tell you 2024 is going to be the most difficult election. And so I'm telling you, if you go to the market to sell your candidate, it's a very competitive market. NDC has selected their candidate already. I've told you John Mahama. And who is John Mahama? Now, if you go to the market, another feature of the market is that the market is dominated by women. If you go to the market, the market is dominated by the Christians. 71.2% of the Ghanaian population are Christians. If you go to the market, 50.7% of the population are women. If you go to the market, about 62% of the population are youth. If you go to the so market... So when you are selling a political I'm, product, you cannot, in I'm, Ghana, use I'm, a Muslim. I'm coming. That's what you're saying. No, no, I'm coming. Paul, don't put words in I'm my asking, mouth. I'm asking, that's what I'm asking. I'm doing political market analysis. Yes, you said... I'm telling you the features of the market. Mm -hmm. Because the market should help you to determine what to produce. It's the market that there's, determines there's, what to produce. There's a market in Nigeria. No, I'm coming. That has majority Muslim. Yeah. That elected Chief Obasa and Joe is a Christian. Check, check. You see, Paul. You see, if you are bringing a Nigeria issue, mm. let me finish and we can even talk about Nigeria issue. Because in the last election, don't go to Obasa and Joe. Obasa and Joe, because of the role he played. Paul, check it. Because of the role he, the role he played in moving from the military government to the civilian government, he was, he was, he was rewarded for that. But, but check after that. That's the point check, I'm saying that therefore check, yeah, check, no, there no. could be other factors that may override some of no, the no, five Paul. cardinal points that you make. Yeah, Paul. So let me make my point. Yeah, go on. I'm saying that you are going to sell in the market. Mm -hmm. If you go to sell in the market, in that market, 50.7 percent are women. If you can get a candidate that can win majority of the women vote, you can win the election. So we get a woman. I'm coming. If if you're going to use Paul, that analysis, Paul, we'll pick a woman. Paul, let me finish. Mm -hmm. If you go to the market. You get 47.5% of the population accounts. Mm -hmm. If you get a candidate who can easily connect with account regions and give you a majority of the account vote, you can win the election. Mm -hmm. If you go to the market, I've already mentioned the Christian um, 
um, population of 71.2%. In the last election, let me take you to Nigeria because we brought up the Nigeria issue. When PDP chose Atiku Abubakar from the north, who, is, who was a Muslim, the fact that if you go to Nigeria, the Muslim dominated about 54% or so. Now, when the PDP chose Atiku Abubakar, and you go to the turn of APC to also choose a candidate, you realize that the president was supporting his vice president, that is a professor, Yemi Osibanjo. But the party delegate realized that because politics is a game of numbers, and the fact that there's always that connection, in the south where the Christians are in majority, they chose a Muslim, which is Tinibu. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you something, Paul, you can check. When they chose Tinibu, <laughs> we've done a documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So, so so maybe I'm giving you a different so angle to it. Go on. So they chose Tinibu. And when they chose Tinibu, do you know why they chose Tinibu? Because they wanted to avoid a situation where the PDP will have the religious advantage over them. So when Atiku chose his running mate, he came down south to choose his running mate. And Obi went up north to choose his running mate, who is a Muslim. What did Tinibu do? He made his ticket Muslim, Muslim ticket. And what happened? In the north where the Muslims are in majority, Tinibu had what, 5.5 million votes. Atiku had 5.1 million. Because of Tinebu's connection, as uh, you know, the, the strategy Tinebu used is that he chose an Awoza man as his uh, uh, running mate. And the reason being that if you go to Nigeria, 25% of the population are houses, 21% are Yoruba people. So strategically, what did he do? He chose an Awoza man to connect with houses. He himself was Yoruba. Tinebu won in all the Yoruba states except Lagos because of his connection. So in politics, there are connections. That's what I'm saying that. If you can get somebody like Oran, Alan Chair Martin, Alan can easily connect with a, I can't vote for you. How do we know that? Oh, Paul? Paul, since 92, you said, you said it. That, you said since 92, we've been having some advantage in the Akan region. Yeah, but how do we know that <laughs> Mr. Chair Martin himself as an individual will connect with the Santi? So if you ask them, how do you know Baumia will do, they'll tell you he, we have done that. The one you are discounting. How do we know no, Alan Chair Martin? Paul, Paul, don't even bring that Paul, one. Has the vote been cast for him before in that circumstance? He has run MPP Paul, primaries. Paul, has he been carrying the Ashanti region Paul, when he ran the MPP Paul, primaries? Paul, Paul, we are, we are How do about, we know that? No, we are talking about electing somebody to become the president of Ghana. I get it. And are you saying that Ashanti will not be interested who becomes the president of Ghana? I'm not saying that. You are, <laughs> you are picking a particular candidate. And yeah. I'm saying that. How do we know no, Paul, that I'm, he will I'm, win Ashanti I'm, I'm asking you a question. Yes. That you think that Ashanti will not have interest as who becomes the next president of Ghana? That Ashanti have interest that who becomes the president of Ghana is the same interest every other region has. So, so yes, the now, same interest. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. No, you are not answering my question. You said you picked Mr. Lancha Yeah. Great. How the do you I'm convince making... us that he indeed has the connection to draw Ashanti vote? Paul. Has it happened before? In, can you say that when but, you but, ran but, the but, Congress but, but, in but, 2000? Alan has not contested as president before. So but it's contested I, as MPP flag bearer many no, times. But, but I mean, you're talking about the presidents. We're talking about 2024 election. We yes. are making analysis toward 2024 yeah, election. I'm asking, how do you know? Is, that, is it historical or is it imaginary? No, Paul, I'm saying that the candidate mm -hmm. who are contesting, Yes. if you take the front runners, mm -hmm. We want to get over 2 million votes in Ashanti region. Very simple Why can't that be Kennedy Japan? Why must it be Alan Chama? So I'm making my point. When Ken Person comes, he also makes that point. Oh, but you have to be able to convince us that it is Alan. And, I, and I'm saying that Alan, because of his connection with the region, and I'm saying that in politics, we have political connect. I've told you established I'm asking why. you to zero down the connection. Is it he's an MP of the cons of that place? Is it that he won this number of votes? Is it that he has employed this? Is it that he has... No. What is the, where is the connection? So you don't know Alan is coming from Ashanti? I know, but I come from a Jusu with him. So I know that. But <laughs> yeah, that's, so, I come from a Jusu. Mm -hmm. I may not have any connection there. Mm -hmm. But so I'm asking you that drill down to the connection. I'm saying that. When it comes because you are pointing us out of 10 candidates to one person. Yeah. So we need to have a substantial sort of, you know, but, value so that we can get convinced. No, Paul, we are going to sell a product. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. You are now going okay. to sell a product. Yeah. So the point, let me, let me, Paul, yeah, let please me wrap it up, up here. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying that if you consider the nature of the market, the fact that 71.2% of the population, that is the market you are going to sell your product, are Christians, you need to connect easily with the Christian community. Of course, the Christians also have interest as who becomes the next president of Ghana. Yeah, yeah. So you need a candidate who can easily connect with the Christian community, who can easily connect with the Akan community. I mentioned this name because politics is a game of numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you can get, a, can get a candidate who can connect easily with the, the Christian community, who, who are in majority, 71.2 is not a small number. I just told you in the Nigeria example what Tinebu did to beat Atiku in the last election. So it's also very important. And also, the major problem, Paul, the major problem in this country now is youth unemployment. Correct. And the, 
And if you consider all those who are contesting, if there's one candidate who has proven over the years that when it comes to job creation, he's the master of it, it's all Alan Thamaten. So Alan has the credibility and the character and the competence that when he stands on a political platform to communicate to the youth and promise them that when I come, I'll be able to create jobs for you, they will check his track record. And they will realize that he's not just saying it. He's got a proven, demonstrable track record that he can create job jobs. Job creation. Yeah. So Alan can easily connect with the youth in terms of, because that's the major problem. Every youth in Ghana, the major problem is now an unemployment issue. So Alan can easily connect with the 62% youth. He can easily connect with the Christian community because of his character, his behavior, the way he has carried himself over the years. And he can easily connect with Akan regions. And I'm saying that, let me tell you, Paul, one way you can connect easily is through language. Do you know that? Language is the way of connecting. Yes. And Alan speaks, that's, I, I, I say it everywhere. The day Alan went to meet Cape Coast chief, and he started speaking fancy, I wish you were there. All the chiefs there. It's like, and I'm saying that he, if he can get Alan to connect with the central region and connect well with the western region and give you over 2 million votes in Ashanti region and also the fact that the major problem in Greater Accra is unemployment because when, when everybody finishes school, they want to come to Accra to look for a job. So unemployment rate in Accra is enormous. So if you can get a candidate that can easily, who has the competence, the credibility, that when he promises the youth, they will believe him, then Alan can help you. Because in the next election, four regions will determine the election. Paul, 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 write it down. Four regions will determine the next election. Ashanti region, Central region, Western region, and, and Greater Accra. This region will determine the election. So get a candidate who can easily connect with this region. First principle I've told you is that consolidate and maximize. Before you make sure that you don't lose these two uh, important swing regions, where NDC is targeting, because now they've given you Atufosin from there, and Amabua also from there. So the point I'm making is that if you really want to win this election, if it's not that you want to go into an election and maybe try see and try and see, but if you really want to win, just check out previous record, the results that came, and consolidate the gains you made with a candidate that can easily connect with all the people I've, that I've mentioned. And so if you, if you do that, and you, your objective, Paul, Alan is the best candidate the party must present. Okay, points well made. Against um, John Mahama. Uh, uh, against John Mahama. Okay, 27 minutes at the top of the hour at uh, 10 o'clock. Now we have Dr. Gideon Boako coming to talk about uh, Alhaji Dr. Baumia. So let's see, what text messages are you getting? All right, we have quite interesting messages here. This coming from Pros Fanatin says, Was Alan not an Asante anymore when Akufaju trounced him in the region in 2014? Asante Sano voting based upon which aspirant hails from the region. Frank Barton says, Alan needs better communication team. This Akan thing won't sell. Coming from Emmanuel Kofi says, please tell us why Alan should be elected. Coming from Akesan Dibaba Taylor says, good evening, Paul. It's obvious that that Alan campaign member doesn't know what he's talking about. You can't overlook Dr. Baumia when it comes to the growth of the NPP in the northern region. The MB's influence can't be overemphasized. It's possible with Dr. Baumia. Alex Nyako says, Paul, the fact of the matter is NPP doesn't want just a flag bearer. We want a president and Dr. Baumia is the best among the rest. Jesse Boako says, Paul, honestly, he never mentioned any of um, Mr. Alan Tremonton's policy. Some of his arguments are inaccurate. Even when he, you try to draw his attention, he refused to listen. And lastly, coming from Kwame Boatin, Kwame says, Paul, let's wait for Alan's performance in special delegates in Ashanti region on Saturday. Antoinette. So Albert Dodo says, I get very worried when we start weighing, weighing the candidates on the tribal and ethnic scale. Ghana needs a leader that can deliver the development we deserve. Bruce Lehman says, all, among all the contestants, it is Kennedy Ohini Ijapon who is acceptably born on a Saturday. Voting on Saturday means victory for Kennedy Ohini Ijapon. No wonder he's number one on the ballot. It's divinely ordained. It's Ken's time. Kwesi Barcelona says, good evening, Paul. It's Mr. Bachman saying, because of the nature of the electoral market, NPP should always present only an Ashanti candidate. I believe Chief Alan Kojo Tremantin can be a nice president, but the time and season is calling Dr. Mahomet Dubaumia from Kwesi Barcelona, a.k.a. Pon Katamanso. Master planner watching us from... 
Kintompo says, this is pure tribal analysis. The NDC replacing the Northern with an Akan has nothing to do with the NPP presidential primaries. Ex-president Mahama is from the northern and Dr. Baomia is also from the northern region. Now, do you think someone from the Ashanti region who is a member of the NPP will ignore Dr. Baomia and vote for ex-president Mahama because Ma Baomia is not from the Ashanti region? Dr. Baomia will, sh will surely lead the NPP to break the eight. Ba Berima Kwekujan says Alhad came to campaign in Ashanti, which is the largest zongo in Ghana, countless times, yet we lost Basar, and for the first time, the NDC's vote increased miraculously. And lastly, Jones Nana Apia Beko says, Apostle, ask the Alan guy at your studio if the parliamentary candidate presented the party in 2008 weren't influential to turn things around. Happy birthday, Miss Bent. I wish you a wonderful and joyous happy birthday, Martin Triple B. To you, Angelo. From Cape Coast, we have Ozana saying Mr. Bokman is struggling to sell his candidate. After Nana was selected as flag bearer, he abandoned the party and told us he was a man of God and had nothing to do with politics again. Now he's back because it is Alan. Uh, Kwesi Reynolds in Agona says, I think this is the golden opportunity for the NPP to dispel the notion that positions are reserved for how long one has served in the party only. Honestly, all the aspirants have contributed immensely towards the growth of the party and deserve to be voted for. I think Baobia deserves the leadership now. From Record Man, uh, good evening, Paul. Alan's connection, in quote, he says, with the Ashanti's is former President Kufo. It's just funny how Mr. Buckman lacks the confidence to mention it. Lord in London says, please tell Mr. Abu Buckman that Dr. Balmya is more connected in Ashanti region than Alan. Alan abandons the party at the least opportunity. Well, that's a bit unfair. And then Kojo says, the gen Paul, the gentleman is there to talk about Alan, not any other candidate. Please allow a fair playing ground. Nevertheless, the point he's making confirms the current number of seats the MPP has up north. The connection plays a major role in African politics, be it tribe, religion, etc., etc. Sir Bright from Tantral says, Paul, you forgot to mention Honorable Godvern Kwame Agboza. He's also a member of the new newly appointed minority leadership. So they still... Hmm. Right. So they still, uh, he forgot to mention Honorable Governor Kwame Boza. He's also a member of the newly appointed minority leadership. So they still have the Airways represented. I just wanted to add that. Now, from Hamza Sulay, sorry for butchering your name. He says, if majority of the MPs and the MMDCEs are supporting Dr. Baumia, and those MPs and MMDCs have 50% influence on their delegates in their constituency, then it's it's an automatic win for him. We should all rally for the victory 2025 for DMB. Paul, I really like Alan, but the system is going crazy again against him. Back to you, Paul, if you're ready. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, the Sami Aoku story, he was our guest on Tuesday uh, here on Good Evening Ghana. And then uh, a story popped up. We can't see, really find the online part. Uh, the, the online seemed to be dubious, but, but it's a story that's popped up. That Samir uh, Aoku said here that um, the MPP don't need Ashanti votes. They need Northern votes. Really, no MPP person can ever say that. A casual look at the figures will tell everybody that every political party needs Ashanti votes. So, so there's, that, 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 that's a, a, a no-brainer, and it's a non-starter. However, what uh, Samir Aoku was talking about is that he, he was making an analogy with President uh, uh, Obama. And he said the Democrats took their decision in 2008 that even though Hillary Clinton was a big person in the party, a served the party, and they loved her, this was the party's opportunity to change the narrative. The narrative of American politics. The narrative that black people can never be on the ballot and be successful. The Democratic Party decided to change that narrative and take the black votes forever. Those black votes, gotten in it significantly, came back in 2020 to help them with Joe Biden's victory. So he was talking about how political parties make a decision. And at this time, the MPP has an important decision to make. And this is a real opportunity for the MPP to pick Dr. Baumia, change the narrative, kill the NDC stronghold, consolidate their base, and then hopefully win another election. This is how Sami Aoko put it. Baumia comes to the table, just like Barack Obama did for the Democrats. The Democrats realized that they were losing the black vote because the Republicans were also eating into their turf and all that. Then they identified this young Illinois senator. And then they said, look, the guy had not been even in the party for long, but let's give it a shot. 
I'm not too sure. Yeah, be one term senator. Yes, one term senator. Shortest ever in American shortest. history. Shortest. When he was contesting to the leader of the free world and leader of the Democratic Party, the black population in America was just around 17.5%. Out of the 17.5%, 35% out of the 17.5% were in jail. Serving various terms, you know, for rape, for robbery, for this. So his own especially, minority... Especially men. Especially men. Mm. So for his own minority group, 35% were in jail. So that was a super minority. That still did not deter the Democrats. They chose hope over fear. They decided to put this guy up against what people then called an establishment candidate. Senator McCain. And Barack, no, 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 Hillary. Oh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary. Hillary Clinton. Barack captured, Big establishment candidate. captured the imagination. Right the former president. I'm telling you, with a huge pedigree in the politics of the United mm -hmm. States, he captured the imagination of white America. And the guy delivered victory for the Democrat. You know, the biggest beneficiary of the sacrifice of the Democrat was Joe Biden. In 2020, he had in excess of 90% of the black vote. Welcome back to the show, and Dr. Gideon Bwako has joined us in the studio. Uh, Gideon, it's been a tough campaign, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been. I mean, um, we've been moving across the country. Uh, um, we just took a break from the normal um, process and decided to focus on superdelegates for now. So as I speak with you, the vice president has taught all the 16 regions in the country engaging the superdelegates. He's currently in the Ashanti region. And shall be in Accra tomorrow to continue with the engagements. And then Tuesday, we, we, we shall go for, for the kill. Saturday? Uh, Saturday. Saturday, <laughs> we, we go for the kill on Saturday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so why sh the question is why should it be Dr. Baumia? Yeah, yeah before, ten of them. before I come to that, I heard you play the interview you had with Samuel Oku. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, the yes. twist mm -hmm. to, to that, I, I, I just want to say, it, it, it's part of the politics and the propaganda people and the spin people like to put on issues when they come up. You know, Samuel Oku is a fine gentleman, young man who has moved through the ranks of the party, become the national youth organizer, the national organizer of the party. So he knows how to organize himself and his thoughts and making presentations. There's no way what he said can be linked to the twist that has been put on what he said. So I would just advise that, yes, we are into politics, and people may want to try to target some candidates, and when they don't get them, people and our science who have been working for such candidates are then, then become the target. And I'm sure Samuel Ku is one of such targets. I, I have become one, of course. And uh, I, I just want to say that whoever misconstrued or decided to diabolically interpret, misinterpret what Samuel Ku said in that particular angle has not done him or herself anything. Samuel Ku would never have made any such statement. As I speak with you, he is with the Vice President in Ashanti, engaging the party people in the region. There is no way he will say it. we don't need the votes from that region, and he will go there to, to engage them. It's quite paradoxical in that, in that sense. And Samuel wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Mm, I see. Okay. It's on, well, the, on the yes, why, why should be Dr. issue as to why Dr. Baumia. You know, Paul, this contest... It's an internal NPP contest. But the end game is to present a candidate to the Ghanaian people, a candidate that will be able to market himself and the party for the buying of the Ghanaian people, for us to win elections in 2024. In that sense, you need to ask yourself, what is the Ghanaian people or the Ghanaian citizen looking for? The average Ghanaian person, the student, the scholar, the nurse, the banker, everyone is looking up to have a president who will have a certain clear vision, a vision that will be able to address pertinent problems and issues of the ordinary people. So sitting here as a young man, and I'm sure every young person listening to us wants to see who amongst the candidates presents a clear vision, a clear focus, an idea that he or she can identify with and can believe that given the opportunity, this man 
will be able to execute this plan to deal with the problems of this country. That is what Ghanaians are looking for. And that is where Dr. Baumia comes to the top. Over the years, take it or leave it, Baumia comes across as the man who has demonstrated and shown clear plan, clear vision, clear ideas, suggested policies in opposition and in government that the good people of Ghana know that given the right framework and the right set of persons and the commitment, when these ideas are executed, they'll be able to deal with the problems of this country. And that is why a lot of people think that Baumia has been the most impactful vice president in the history of this country. Why? Because unlike in, not, in no derogatory manner, other vice presidents that people cannot associate with clear vision and policies, when you mention Baumia's name, a plethora of policies, ideas, and programs that have been brought to bear to the, politi the body politics of this country can be associated with him. If you take all the 10 contestants who are contestants, everybody may have a vision or idea. But the person who has consistently demonstrated that he has a vision and idea to support or help build this country is Baumia. Give us two. If, Give us yeah, two of those. Exactly. Two, two of I'm those. I'm going to mention just two. people are here. They are listening. And, and, and yeah. link you two to and how, how those ideas yeah, are How successful problems. have they been? Give us two. And more importantly, for the younger people, we're talking about jobs. The person as a president who can help us create more jobs is not the person who is going to hold pickers and catalysts to show us to lead, but the person who will bring ideas that people can, through those ideas, find jobs. How has Baumier's policies and ideas that he's introduced into our governance helped in creating jobs? Think, for instance, drones. When Baumia introduced the, the health the, drones, exactly. When Baumia introduced the drones, we mm. all saw the halal balloon that accompanied it. But today, through the technology that was introduced, we are having a system that has been introduced for the first time in this country and 100% manned by Guyanese. Okay, Baumia came with the idea of let us link our economic development with digitization and leapfrog on technology to make sure that we're able to grow faster and move the economy forward. People don't understand quite well what he's trying to do. But through the digital platform that is championed, a policy that wouldn't naturally sound so, you know, uh, flowery to a politician because it's not a building that has been built somewhere that can say I've constructed this mm -hmm. interchange or something. But Omiya sees the vision and says that this is where we have to go. We do this. But, but how do, does the employer? We do this. People? We do mobile mm. money interoperability. We create easy access for people to trade on the internet. And that is why today you go to our tertiary institutions and even senior high schools, there are students who do not own a kiosk, who do not own a store, who do not have the money to rent a building to say this is my shop, but they are trading. Why? Because the platform has been created for people to go to the internet, buy purchase, sell, and make payment. It is so easy. And so you have young girls at the tertiary institutions whose you know, shops and kiosks. It's on their phone. It's on their phones. And they are trading. Young guys, their business office is their laptop. And they are moving. They are trading. They are making income for themselves. They are creating jobs for others. There are thousands and millions of jobs created in that space. OK? So th this, is, this is the showcase of idea that can deal with problems, present problems in the country. And people can really see that through this process, things and life have become easy for us. Through mobile money interoperability, velocity of money has gone high. It lessens the burden on people. And people can easily transact trade and go about their businesses with less or no hassle. That is the kind of vision and ideas that we're talking about. Remember when we introduced Agenda 111, many people were complaining and talking. The president but is that the, successful? The president saw the vision. And today, through Agenda 11, many, many people are employed as laborers working and you may Building not. Building the hospitals. Exactly. You understand? Th these are ideas, demonstration of ideas that deal with problems. So people if you're giving us two, you're giving us mobile money interoperability and Agenda 11. Exactly. 
So, what about digitalization? Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. The whole architecture... Or oh, the more money interoperability is part of the digitalization process. The whole digital process. architecture is, 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 is something so big on its okay, own. What about, and, yeah, what about the, the other side, where they say that, yeah, yeah, Dr. Baumia is very articulate. Yes, yes, he, he sounds like he's a very intelligent person. He told us that he has collected the key and given it to the IGP over the dollar. NDC have a flag going around. Dr. Baumia inherited a dollar at three... Now it's twelve. Yeah. How so so I guess I guess we we'll get time to come to the more political reasons why it should be Baumia. Yes. And the, but but I can deal with this. Yeah. Um, so do you want to do this now or you had it? Maybe I can, I can come back yes, yes. later. Yeah. Okay. So, so on the more reason why it is Baumia. So on the global picture, national picture, mm -hmm. the NPP needs to present a candidate that Ghanaians will know that this candidate is not just coming to be president and sitting down. People are going to push him with ideas that are not even workable. He doesn't know what to do. Baumia, right from the word go, seems to have a set of ideas that are workable, that are practical, that can be implemented and executed to deal with the problems of this country. And he's demonstrated as vice president. So on that score, you see that we have a credible candidate that has a vision, vision that the Ghanaian people can identify, we can deal with the problems. But then PP needs to cross the header of electing a leader before we present that person to the, to, to, to the Ghanaian people. How does the MPP come up with a credible leader? And why do we want to settle on Dr. Bamu Baume? Because we have to win elections first for you to implement your ideas. If you don't win the elections, you can implement. Which, which of them, out of the 10, has what it takes to, be, to win elections for, for the MPP? Now, in this particular sense, you may look at different scenarios. But the most common and practical scenario, two ways. First, look into your household, your ancestors' put to make sure that first you're able to consolidate your gains because you don't want any single vote within your, within your home to slip away. So how do we consolidate our gains? You need to elect a candidate that the grassroots of the party, every rank and file of the party, can easily say that this person has what it takes to merit our vote and our opportunity as a leader. If you look through, Baumia has over the years demonstrated to the party people that one, he is the person who will stand up for the new patriotic party in rain or shine, morning, afternoon, evening, dawn, adverse situations, favorable situations. Baumia has demonstrated that he's a true party person who has the party at heart. Under no circumstance will we hear Baumia complain about happiness in this party. He's human. It is not everything happening in MPP that he may be happy with, he may be pleased with, but he knows where to deal with the issues and address the issue. He has never turned his back to this party. When situations are tough and were tough, MPP people called on Baumia. He responded to the call and truly he was able to convince the people that he's the person for the party people. So the party people see that he's the person that has been there for us when things were tough, in rain or shine, Baumia is the only candidate amongst the 10 who has worked so closely with the party people over the last uh, 12, 16 years in the trenches. Every single constituency in this party, Baumia has connections there. So the party people believe that this man, given the opportunity, under no circumstance, whether his temper is provoked or not provoked, he will sit right with the party and make sure that he aligns with the vision and the soul of the party. That is one. So the party people have that trust and confidence in him. Then again, you also see in Baumia that young chap who has what it takes to even enter into the camp of the opponent, to be able to weaken the strength of the opponent. I've told you what it means for him to hold the votes that we have at home. The party people, nobody in MPP has ever imagined that if Baumia comes, I am an MPP person, I won't vote for him. Why? What is the reason? Because they don't have any reason. They see Baumia as there for the party all the time. But then again, if you're going to in a, into a competition with somebody, you look at your strength, you look at that person's strength. If you have what it takes to weaken the strength of the opponent, you go after that kill and you weaken the strength of the opponents. If you look at the history, the NDC have maintained three strongholds. The North, the Volta region, the non-traditional Akan areas, and then the Zongos. Okay? 
Once we are working to make sure we consolidate our gains, in that case, Baumia has what it is because he connects with the party people. There's not a single MPP member who will say, if you vote for Baumia today, I won't vote for him. But then we have to get into the stronghold of the opposition. Where is the strength of Mahama and the NDC? They are strength in the north, in the voter, the non-traditional kind of areas, and then uh, the Zongo. So electing Baumia also presents the NPP as a party that comes to the table with equity, okay? And we are not just coming to the table with equity, we are coming to the table with inclusion. We are going to make every single Ghanaian see and identify with the NPP, such that that unfortunate tag and stigma on the NPP, that the NPP belongs to a certain sect, can be washed away and washed away forever. And that is why Samir Oku was talking about in the US election, the Democrats going for Obama, because he's black. Obama had served one term as a senator, but they went for him and he won the election. Once we elect Baumia, we are able to deal with that. Every single person in this country will see the MPP as an inclusive party, see the MPP as a party that presents itself as a party of equity, and everybody can identify with that. The NDC can no longer go to Volta, go to the Krubos, go to the North, go to the settler communities, even in the South, and say that I don't vote for the NPP because it is an Akan party. Why? Because the NPP has also elected a candidate who is not an Akan. Why then, how can you then convince somebody that the NPP is an Akan party? And this is something that has been worrying the party over years. We have a golden opportunity to deal with this problem, to eradicate it from our history and our minds and the minds of every Ghanaian once and for all. And we are not just saying, let us present Baumia to do that because he doesn't qualify. He has everything that it takes to know that Baumia is a competent person and is a credible person. So once we do that, we are able to address a serious problem. And you will then see that the strength of the NDC in these strongholds will then be decimated. Once you decimate their strength in these areas, what you do is that you are by way reducing their votes and increasing your votes. And Baumia has done it before. Okay? If you look at the votes, I saw you talk mm -hmm. about the parliamentary seats in the past. In the past, prior to the advent of Baumia, out of the 31 seats in the three northern ranges, north, northeast, and savannah, MPP had four seats. NDC had 27. If anybody had prophesied that a time will come that MPP will have majority seats in parliament in the north. Nobody would have believed. But consistently over time, he took it upon himself to situate his campaign and operational activities in MPP in the north. And given the opportunity and support by the party and the presidential candidate, Baumia's focus was on the, in the north. And consistently, he's been able to reduce the NDC seats from 27 to 15, increase the NPPCs from 4 to 16. And so today, as we speak, the NPP commands majority seat in the north than the NDC. What does it mean? It means is that if we have been able to, over time, gotten majority of people in the north who were hitherto voting for the NDC to reduce the votes of NDC and increase that of the NPP, it means that we are taking control of the region. If you're able to do that and you consolidate your hold in the south, then you win the elections completely. You understand? And if you look at 2020, you saw how parliament came about. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the verge, you, you understand? Mm -hmm. MPP 137 plus 1, NDC 137. Out of 17 new seats that the MPP won from the NDC across the country in the whole of in, in, in 2020 elections, 15 of them came from the north. Wow. Only two came from the south. Out of 17 seats, the NPP won 17 new seats from the NDC in the 2020 elections. Out of the 17, 15 came from the north and only two came from the south. So what does it tell you? It tells you that, but for the performance we had in the north in terms of the parliamentary seats, NPP would have been in government by the minority seats, or we wouldn't have been in government. That is not to say we didn't get votes from here. But what I'm saying is that if you look at the performance over time, it tells us that Baumia, even as running mate against John Mahama as presidential candidate, Baumia has been able to conduct and present himself so well to the admiration, okay, 
and, and the, uh, winning the support of the people in the north against Mahama, what would happen if you present Baumia as a presidential candidate against Mahama as a presidential candidate, even as a running mate? The dampening effect of Baumia on Mahama has been so phenomenal. If you present him as a presidential candidate, you're going to win the elections overwhelmingly. Now, people say he's not an Akan. NPP's base is the Akan area. And so if you vote for Baumia, the Akans will not vote for him. That is not true. It will never happen. You see, NDC is NDC in voter region. Whether Professor Mills or Mahama, it never changed the way the NDC votes in the voter region. They have been voting overwhelmingly for the NDC, even though Mills and Mahama are not from the voter region. You understand? Where a party's heart is, that is where the party's heart is. It is not to say, as people say, even if you present a sheep, they will vote for him. No. And so far as you are able to present a candidate that the people also can easily identify with, you are assured that you wouldn't have problems over there. That is why the two political parties are able to hold on to their strongholds. And the people in Ashanti and largely Akans do not vote because somebody comes from our region. If it takes somebody like Professor Mills. Professor Mills came in 2000. He's from Central Region. He never won Central Region. Okay? Professor Mills came in 2004. He's from Central Region. He was not able to win Central Region. Professor Mills was only able to annex Central Region in the second round of 2008. So even if, although Professor Mills was an indigent, a true, true person from Central Region, he never won the Central Region at first attempt. He was not able to win second attempt. If you come to 2016, okay, who was there? Uh, is it pa Professor uh, Pakwese Ms. Atta, right? Mm -hmm. He was running mate. Then DC couldn't win Central Region. Even in 2020, Professor Genano Pokwajima came, Central Region. Then DC couldn't win Central Region. Then Kufuad won Central Region in the year 2020. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. So to be able to ascertain that a particular region will vote for a particular candidate because he comes from there, there should be that historical evidence. You understand? Mr. Alan Martin, that my other colleagues are talking about, in any way, there are about six people from Ashanti region who are contesting in this Fabriarship election. Mm -hmm. Okay? Four of them are maybe true Ashanti people. Two of them have partial you know, origin to Ashanti. Mr. Shemartin Jacob has partial origin to Ashanti. Alan Shemartin's origin to Ashanti, a trace to Ashanti region. It's not full. It's partial. It's half central, half, but he says it's from Ashanti. Let's even put it that way. If you look at the way the votes in Ashanti region have been going, take somebody like President Kufo and President Kufo. The Kufo is not from Ashanti region. But President Kufo has never got uh, votes in terms of percentage more than President Kufo in the Ashanti region. If you abstract 2000 and 2008, because 2000... Even in a national election? Yes, I'm not sure. In I'm a giving, national... Exactly. 2000, yeah. 2000 was a second round. So mm -hmm. usually you don't do analysis mm -hmm. with second round. 2008, second round. You don't do analysis with second round. President Kofo in 2004 won 76% of the Ashanti votes. Was that the highest before Kofo in 78? The highest. President Kofo uh, in 16. 2016 got 76%. You, you understand? So although President Kofo is not from Ashanti region, the votes, the percentage votes that President Kufuor, who is from Ashanti region, got is not different from what President Kufuor got. So the people of Ashanti, yes, they, they know, and we all take pride in that. That is the bastion of the party. They are always looking for the candidate who can help us win the elections, not necessarily a tribesman or who comes from our hood. You understand? And when they see you as somebody who comes from within us, and you cannot win the election, they won't give you. That is why even in MPP primaries, Mr. Chemati has never gotten more than 20% in MPP primaries from Ashanti region. It has never happened. You understand? President Including 2007. I know 2007 Akufado won more Ashanti. We, we, we voted. 2007 yeah. was, was, was single. Single. Yeah. 2010 and 2014, Mr. Chemati never got more than 20%. Okay? So the sweetness of the, of the, of the what? Of the pudding they say is in the eating. You should be able to convince people within the party that who amongst the ten, okay, do the people of Ashanti identify with? And they will tell you over the years, it is Baumia they see. Funerals, it is Baumia. Party events, it is Baumia. Anything party, it is Baumia. Akwasida, it is Baumia. This, it is Baumia. They won't let it be that you come from within us. You always sit on the fence. When it is election time, you show up. 
and you want to convince us you are the person we should give our voice to, they'll give it to the person who identifies with them. And Dr. Baumia has that. Unlike other, other candidates who may be popular at the top and not at the base, Baumia's popularity emanates from the base. Okay? And then it's principle. So he's so, not an establishment so, candidate. No, no, no. So I say, I say, I put it this way. From the grassroots to the grass top, everybody says it is Baumia. Okay? So Baumia's support is not only at the grass top. It is from the grassroots. And if you look at Saturday, the people who are going to vote, if you look at the majority of them are grassroots people. That's, is that true? You're yeah. Yes, you're talking about 963 or so yes, people, super delegates. Super delegate. How are they Out of this, uh -huh. 275 of them are constituency chairman. chairman. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me the constituency chairman is not a, a, a food singer. Okay? Yeah. 275 of them are yeah. constituency chairmen. Mm -hmm. These are people who have been going to the grounds to work for the party, spend their money at funerals, spend their money at outdoor, spend their money at weddings and all of that, doing everything on behalf of the party at the base. Mm -hmm. So they are the senior prefects of the grassroots at the base. Mm -hmm. 275. Then you have 272 regional executives. Regional. Regional executives. At the top of the region. At the top of the region. Mm -hmm. They are also foot soldiers. I was once Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer. Mm -hmm. You dare not have told me, mm -hmm. because I was Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer, I was not a foot soldier. From Impreche to Kofor Kam to Chenchenkura to Memura Aso Number One to Dromankuma to everywhere in Ashanti Region, I know. Because I was a foot soldier, Regional Youth Organizer, going to the grounds to do campaign for the party. So I am a foot soldier. Mm -hmm. So the Regional Executive is a foot soldier. 275. Okay. okay? Plus no. 275 give you over 500 delegates. They are also 275. Exactly. Okay. The region executive 16 times 17 is 272 or so. Okay. okay. Plus 275. They are more than 500, getting to 600 and out of the nearly 9. 54 percent. Exactly. Of the total. Of the total. And so they are foot soldiers. Exactly. So you are saying they will reflect the foot soldiers' thinking. They will thinking. reflect the foot soldiers' thinking. That is why the Ashanti Regional Chairman have issued a statement today. You've seen the statement yeah. from the Ashanti Regional Chairman, mm -hmm. signed by the Shiaiso Constituency Chairman, Chairman Jokad, signed by the Dr. B Constituency Chairman, who is the Dean of the Ashanti Chairman, Chairman John Peace, Don Peace from Odotobi, and they are saying that, look, they have held meetings with their grassroots and the foot soldiers, and their vote on Saturday is going to reflect what the grassroots have asked them to do. That is why Ashanti is doing something unique. You go and vote, you go back to your constituency, sit down with the grassroots, the party people, foot soldiers on the screen and watch and tell them who you voted for, that you will vote represented them. So at the end of the day, the outcome of the 26th August vote, okay, on Saturday, is going to reflect what the grassroots suggests. And the Ashanti chairman are saying that they have listened to the grassroots. The grassroots have told them that they should go and vote for Dr. Mahamud Baumia because he is the person that the ordinary party person identifies with throughout and throughout, from opposition to in government. Baumia has been the person who has been there for the party and the grassroots people. There's no doubt about that. The party people decided on who to vote for, not today. If anybody has any thinking that the delegates of the party, the foot soldiers, are going to decide who to vote for today, then that person is making a mistake. This decision has been taken over years by the association, their involvement, and the engagement with the party and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. So indeed, if you want to look across the spectrum, it shouldn't be so difficult for anybody to know that the person to beat John Mahama in John Mahama's own backyard is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. When it comes to the South, we consolidate our gains, we get our majority seats. There's no way, okay, pre that presenting a fresh candidate to the swing regions will translate into votes for that. History has taught us President Mills was presented as a candidate from the swing regions. Central region never voted for him for 12 years. It took 12 years for Professor Mills to turn the swing region. Even after that, it went back. Park was saying Ms. Atta couldn't do it. Nana Jenopokwajima couldn't do it. So if you want somebody to turn the swing regions, it is not to say that we are presenting a fresh candidate who comes from the place. You need to really read through the political landscape to see who, over the years, identifies so well with your party people. Because look, it is the party people who are going to market the candidate. If the party people have a feeling that this candidate is an election candidate, mm -hmm. he only comes to the fore when we are going for elections. 
After that, you don't see him. You don't hear from him again. Even when you ask a party person who has been using her resources, mega salary, to work for the party and that person, they feel reluctant. They always want to see somebody that they can identify as one of their own. And that person is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. That is why we all think that we have to present Baumia. He has the vision, he has the ideas, he has the charisma, he has the character. The Ghanaian people believe that we need a president today who will be able to help us tame and even reduce corruption. It is not about slogans, it is not about math. The president who will put institu institutions and pillars in place that even when you have a bad president, and you have the right institutional frameworks, you'll be able to deal with corruption. If you're able to digitize your system such that the payment system architecture is widespread for everybody, pervasive across the country, people do not have to have face-to-face -face interaction with people, people do not have to pay bribes, bribe will not be, will be paid. Now, if you look at the Ghana.gov, you want to do passport, a visa application, whatever, you just pay online. You need that kind of modern day contemporary leader who will be able to think outside the box to bring ideas that move in tandem with the contemporary trends within the fickle and then the ch changing system of the world to be able to align everybody and deal with pressing problems. Everybody wants corruption to be solved. How do we solve corruption? It is not by word of mouth. It is by putting in place the right structures Let and place. And that is what Dr. Yeah. Mahmoud Baumia has been doing. He's a party person. Mm -hmm. He's somebody who has sacrificed for this party. Mm -hmm. He's identified with the party in opposition. When things are tough, he's there for us. He doesn't come yeah, out to I think talk you against made that, the party. You made that point and we need, we need to appreciate that going forward and make sure that we win 2024 election. We, we don't have any other option. Okay, so um, the question about the Dr. Mahabir's Bahamia's promises. Do I get a sense from you that those are questions for the main election and this is an internal contest? Oh, should we? Because those, no, no, we can do it. Those that. are being raised as yeah. if you present Dr. Baumia, Quickly, potentially your opponents can say this about him. Yeah, let me and that might resonate with the Ghanaian, some of the Ghanaian people. Let me deal with that quickly. Yes. That is also that a they promise and fail. Yeah, that is also a false narrative. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You see, there are those who are trying to create the impression that unfortunately that this government has failed. Mm -hmm. And if this government has failed, it is failing on, on the footings of President Kufuado and Vice President Baumi. It's not what they are saying. Mm -hmm. It's an attempt mm -hmm. of give the dog a bad name and hang it. Unfortunately, some of the people who are making these pronouncements are people who have served in President Kufuado's government before. Mm -hmm. People who have been in this government for six and a half years, people who are board chairs, people who have held positions in this government. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of power, they want to talk down on this government so that they can have their way. Mm -hmm. I want to establish that, yes, the NPP, like any other political party, has not been able to deal with every single promise that we make to the Ghanaian people. Mm -hmm. And there's no political party that has come to rule this country that has been able to deal with every single promise that they made. Other than that, why is John Mahama coming again? Even John Mahama, who became president, and under him we saw the highest level of doom so queuing for fuel, astronomical prices on electricity tariffs, and all of the inability to buy child pay teacher training allowance, nursing training allowance, and all the community problems that we had under President Mahama. He still believes and thinks that he has something to offer and can offer. And his party has presented him. How much more Baumia, who is a vice president? So the vice president is part of this government. Baumia yes. will never shy away from the achievements of this government and from any shortfalls of this government. But what we need to understand is that we are in to elect a flag bearer. Mm -hmm. Once we elect the flag bearer, whoever we elect is going to campaign on the records of this President Akufuado government. Mm -hmm. There is not a single one amongst the ten whom, after being elected, can go on his own merit mm -hmm. and campaign to win the 2024 elections. You have yeah. to go on the records of this government. Yeah. Then, at that time, we are going to put side by side the record of this government and the record of President Mahama, because he has a record. Yes. Then we need to argue based on that. And that is the point where Baumia says that, look, I am a firm and true believer of the Akufuado government record, the MPP government record. I have been part of this record. I respect it. I appreciate it. I value it. And I'm the only person who can defend this record. So at the end of the day, 
the party people should select a flag bearer who is a believer of the NPP record. One, if you are not a believer of th this party's and this government's record, sorry to say, you don't qualify to lead us. We should select a leader who is a believer, who but believes. You are saying because the record is what you have. It's the nothing record is more, what you have. Less. Nothing more, nothing less. You don't so have if anything. you don't believe in this record, if you don't then, believe then why are you here? In this record, you cannot lead the party. But is it a record, is it a record that is simple to believe in when it is. We, the dollar is at 12? No, let me give you the statistics. Okay, for instance. The dollar is at 12. For, we instance, all know that. for instance, if mm. you're talking about growth mm. of the economy, we have done better than Muhammad did. Because I don't know the day to come down to MPP and NDC. Of a lie. If you look at growth, averagely, Mohammed's government grew this country by 3.9% from 2013 to 2016. From 2017 to 2019, President Kufuado's government grew by 7%. To date, we have done 4.9%, higher than what Muhammad did. If you come to agricultural growth, no, you see, people don't. This, I know. People that don't is really, why I'm trying to they give don't, you. I'm, they I'll, don't worry about that. They, exactly. The dollar is 12. I'm coming to That's that. I'm issue. coming to that. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a okay. few <laughs> information. Then you appreciate where I'm coming All to. Right. When you talk about agricultural growth, this government, President Mohammed's government, did 2.9%. This government has done 6%. If you come to industries growth, Okay, President Mohammed's government did average 3.9%. This government has done 4.6%. Even if you come to the exchange rate depreciation in terms of cumulative sense, how much the CD has depreciated in terms of cumulative service, have you how much it depreciated under Mohammed? This one is low. And if you take key performance of this government, okay, you will see that this government has constructed the highest number of factories in this country since 1992. This government has created the so, highest so number what's, what's of the jobs. Point making, the that point the I'm making is that is not the, the government point, has done well. No, what are you saying? The point I'm making is that nobody is saying that relatively, if you want to check the individual pockets and individual economies, you wouldn't have disparities. Some people may be okay, others are also truly suffering. Suffering is with us today. Suffering was during Mohammed's time. So if within the NPP, and we're going to vote in 2014, the asset test to any political choice is what is the alternative. Without the NPP, what is the alternative? And then when you come to that, then we do comparison of the alternatives. And that is why I'm suggesting to you and everybody in the NPP, left with the NPP and the NDC in terms of comparative performance, when we are there, there's no way the Mahama performance are stripped that of the NPP. And that is where we come to the table, that at the end of the day, who is the leader that has what it takes to communicate, to showcase, to believe in the record of this government and convince the Ghanaian people that yes, indeed, we have not been able to solve every single problem of this country. Yes, indeed, we have created 2.1 million jobs unprecedented in the history of this government by any single government. But yes, there are still Ghanaian people who are not employed. But the jobs that the MPP government through President Kufuado has created, if it is anything to go by, it means we have what it takes to give the Ghanaian people more jobs than Mahama can give and therefore give your vote to us. Yes, indeed, we've not been able to solve the problems of every Ghanaian Fuel prices are high, but Ghanaian people can really reflect in their minds to say that, yes, we have higher fuel prices. We can get fuel to buy. We are not queuing. In Muhammad's time, there was higher fuel prices, yet people were not getting fuel to buy. They were queuing, even in the astronomical prices. And therefore, we are better than President Muhammad. Yes, indeed. Every teacher cannot say he's better off in terms of vision and dreams and what he wants to do, but a teacher can also say that. When I taught for three years under President Mohammed's time because of the mismanagement of the economy, I was given three months' salary under President Kufuado. Even if my salary delays for two months or three months, I am paid. The teacher trainee can say that my allowance was not cancelled in the wake of COVID or Russia-Ukraine war, just as it was cancelled under President Mohammed. President Kufuado is paying even if it delays for two months. The nursing trainee can say that, yes, economic situations are tough, but when it got worse during COVID and Russia-Ukraine war, President Kufuado never cancelled my nursing trainee allowance. He paid. Unlike President Mahama, when things were not even tough, he cancelled my nursing trainee allowance. The ordinary Ghanaian people can see and identify that, yes, indeed, all my problems are not solved, but the pro president and the government 
person have put in place measures to ameliorate the problems that I'm going through. And therefore, my wards and my children's school fees at the senior high school level is paid by the government. The tertiary student can say that, yes, indeed, things are tough. It is not everything that has been solved. But unlike President Mohammed's time, when we were paying electricity tariffs at the tertiary level, President Kufadu came, he canceled it for us. So you can see, and I can give you a plethora of issues for you to be convinced that when it comes down to the NPP and the NDC in terms of comparative performance and who has the edge over the other, everything shows that Mohammed's record cannot compare favorably to that of President Kufuado and the NPP. So the NPP has a solid track record and it only takes a believer, a partaker of this record as a flat bearer to present it. Those who are saying today that the record is bad and therefore we do not have a message. If we elect them as a flat bearer, what moral fortitude and conviction and boldness and audacity are they going to have to present the record of this government to the Ghanaian people? And without the record of this government, we cannot win. The record of this government is more or less a sine qua non to our victory in 2024. And that is why we are saying that we do not have to risk going to elect somebody who doesn't believe in this government and this party. We have to elect somebody who believes in this record, who has made this record his Bible and Quran, reading it morning, afternoon, evening, at dawn, even when he sleeps and wakes up, and you ask him about the record of this government, Dr. Mahmoud Baomiya does not need to wash his face with water to be able to narrate and rattle the records of this government. And it is only the record of this government that we're going to use, and that of President Kufour, to win the 2024 elections. That is why the party people must sit down quietly, reflect, read through the lines, and see who amongst the ten, the five, ten fine gentlemen, who amongst them has what it takes to lift the flag of MPP high over and above all other political parties to shine us into the glorious victory of election 2024. And that is Dr. Mahamudu. Okay, thank you. Let's get a text message it's quickly coming in. We have to be running out of time. Uh, the next presidential elections will be fought on these three things in order of priority. One, the respective visions of the MPP and the NDC presidential candidates. Two, the personalities, i.e. the integrity, competence, and likability of the two candidates. And three, the record of the two parties in office, more so of the NDC and especially the record of their candidates who was vice president and president for a combined period of eight years. And the message is from Yama. Yeah, Let me come straight to you. What are people saying? All right. This is coming from Haruna. And Haruna is saying, Dr. Baumia remains the ultimate for the NPP. Yes, he has his own vision to continue the good works and add his own to move Ghana to the place we all want. Antoinette. What a superb analysis, giving of facts and accurate data for well-informed communication. God bless you, Dr. Gideon Bwako. Nana Oheneba Abredi says, and lastly, Dr. Gideon Bwako has made very clear and demonstrable points. Nothing of tribal or religious sentiment. That's what the NPP will need to sell to Ghanaians. Angelo. So from the Bronx, New York, we have Bufuakwa Nanaba Aaron. He says, uh, greetings to my boss and big brother, Dr. Gideon Bwako, spokesperson, spokesperson for vice president and the next member of parliament for the good people of Tano North. We're always ecstatic to hear and see him on national radio and television. With regard to the special delegates elections, DMB is winning not less than 75% of the votes. Thank you. Back to you, Paul. Uh, Francis writes to us and says that arise all by might and vote massively for the man. Uh, the man of hope, the man we can trust. Indeed, H.E. Dr. Alaji Baumia is a safe pair of hands to steer the transformational ship of sustainable development to the pinnacle and height of national pride and glory, uh, she says. Uh, another one here says that um, Dr. Gideon Buako has, has drawn the lines between political strategist and political analyst. Dr. Baumia will surely lead MPP to victory come 2024. I am a delegate, a police station organizer, and I will vote for Dr. Baumia come November, inshallah. Saturday will be the icing on the cake, he says. Okay, let me get on and see a few more text messages coming in here. Uh, but it's, it's time to go, isn't it? Uh, it's 11.24. Uh, I think that we can, we can, oh, Simon, the, the, Simon, my friend in Parliament, he is the, 
uh, uh, the dean of the press corps in parliament simon says i'm loving today's program i don't even feel like sleeping uh, let him go on okay all right simon is a press corps and he's confirming the fact that uh, 17 of the new 15 of the 17 MPs were came from the northern yeah, region yeah okay we have to leave it here Gideon, now I mean, nothing more just, to say just something last yes 30 seconds on the swing region yeah we went to asin north mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. noble kenya japan is from asin Mm -hmm. But I say not was once his constituents. Mm -hmm. Mr. Alan Chamartin is from a, a central region. Mm -hmm. Yet we lost our sin north. Mm -hmm. Their influence could not be brought to bear. That is why I'm saying that when you're dealing with a swing region, you don't just present a candidate for the first time and think that the swing region will swing towards that candidate. Other than that, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have lost our sin north. We went to our north with two strong men out of the ten from central region, one from Asin North. But we didn't go from a winning position. We were losing. We lost the main election. We, 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 we lost. You yes. understand? So we already lost. And that is why Baumier's relevance is so key. These 17 seats were seats that we had lost in the past to the NDC. But in 2020, his effect and his impact helped the NPP unless those 15 seats from the NDC. That is talking about political relevance and political impact. And the history is there to show that okay. Bahumia's impact is there. We couldn't see that in Asin North. So you cannot just hazard the thinking that, oh, let's present this candidate because he's from here for the first time in the swing region. You can't do that. Okay, President Kufadu wants central region. He's not from there. Yeah, it we, is about we, we what the people here, and the party leave. people there identify. We have to leave it. it. We have to leave it here, Gideon. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening, PMC. You said you're enjoying the show, but you're wondering why we've gone for that long. Okay, uh, for the Bello fans, and, I, and I'm a Bello fan too, we'll come on Tuesday. By then, there'll be more information. Sorry, we couldn't really put it together. Uh, Bello is in the black t-shirt as well. We're I wanted you to see him in the black t-shirt, but he'll be here on uh, Tuesday for sure. Thanks for watching. Good night. Metro TV.